This review was made possible by contributions from viewers like you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. There are many icons associated with Halloween. Zombies, pumpkins, elaborate costumes. But today we're going to talk about witches. The story of Hansel and Gretel is one of the first cautionary tales involving witches that we are told as children. And the moral couldn't be any more clear. Be wary of strangers. Or at least be wary of creepy old ladies who decide to build their houses out of candy instead of lumber. For today's review, my executive producers have banded together to vote on the 2002 adaptation of this classic story. It is unclear if they all knew how horrible this movie was beforehand, or if their collective voice was simply a coincidence. All that we do know for sure is that it must be a Bob show. The movie doesn't begin well, as it shows us that it was brought to us by Hellcon. We are in trouble. And don't let the following title sequence fool you. It looks like Hocus Pocus, but trust me, this movie doesn't come anywhere close to as good as that. During these credits, you'll notice some big names in the cast, like Delta Burke, Gerald McRaney, Lynn Redgrave, Howie Mandel, Bobcat Goldthwait, Sinbad, and because it's been a while since he's been on my show, Tom Arnold. For a movie this terrible to have this kind of a cast in it, the only explanation there can be is witchcraft. Later, in a different movie altogether, we meet a little boy and a little girl who have no bearing on the plot whatsoever. The girl is played by Dakota, peaked too soon Fanning, sister of... You're my fairy godmother. Her. They're having some trouble falling asleep, so their dad decides to read a bedtime story from... The Necronomicon? Hmm. Once upon a time, in a far-off land, there stood a lowly shack... Hardly fit for an animal to live. There aren't any uh, sheep in any of these fairy tales, are there? Apparently, poor little Dakota here saw the movie Black Sheep four years before it was even released. Anyway, Dad tells them the story of Hansel and Gretel. One thing you'll notice is that he reads from the beginning of this book, and he stops reading it at the end of the book. Who knew that the original text was as long as The Lord of the Rings? We meet Hansel and Gretel themselves, who are regularly abused by their wicked stepmother, played by Delta Burke. My cheeks! <laughs> Did I say that their stepmother abused them? What I meant to say was that she struck them out of self-defense! I mean, holy crap, really? I know nobody wants to see small children suffer at the hands of their guardians, but if the kids are this capable of fending for themselves, how is this movie going to end? With them eating the witch? But she can only handle her murderous children for so long, so she decides to take them for a walk in the woods. Kill me now. Me too. I wasn't axing you. Boo! They go deeper into the woods, and it looks like she's taken them to a pirate fair! Ah! During their little constitutional, they're spied on by this raven, who is apparently under the employ of the witch. By the twitching of my nose, something tasty this way comes. Hmm. I think I need to consult my rhyming dictionary for that one. Let's see, uh... Nose... Comes... Uh... NOSE AND COMES DON'T RHYME! The kids manage to get away from their stepmother, when they come across Howie Mandel playing the Sandman as the worst gay stereotype since fucking Pingo. What are you doing here? This is my part of the forest. You're not supposed to be here. Hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more, no more. And Tom Arnold's trying to hide his voice behind some clever sound mixing. You know, I'd love to say a chap, but I've got a hot date. 
maybe an oar. The wood fairy? Well, I know enough about her. Mm. What do you mean? Well, she's a fairy. Mm -hmm. She's blonde. Mm -hmm. Need I say more? If this guy is interested in her, I would be very cautious about someone calling herself the wood fairy. So, yeah, we have Howie Mandel playing the Sandman, and someone thought that a mythical creature whose sole purpose is to put people to sleep would somehow have the ability to make pop culture references that don't make any sense. Because if the genie from Aladdin could do that, so can any mythological creature. The owner's association is getting a letter from me if it's not the birds squawking, it's the squirrels chattering. Hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back no more, no more. Of course. Where else would I live? New York? The city that never sleeps? I don't think so. Though I was looking at a timeshare. I wasn't really interested in it, but if you just go, like, look at it, they give you a clock radio. I happen to be a kick-butt kung fu fighter. I have taught myself online. No, you didn't, because there's no online for you to log on to. And it just goes on like this. This is what the movie thinks is funny. And they beat this joke into the ground like a dying Ewok. How about those bears, huh? Oh my god, why would you show that? So he decides to help them get back home, which he does by leading them aimlessly through the woods so we can get off more pop culture jokes. Huzzah! Thank you! I'll be here all week. Tip your waiter. Alright. Alright, just lie down here. It'll be very comfortable. Everything here is from bed, bogs, and beyond. Alright. Don't want to put a crimp in the system and unions and... This. Okay, I am coming already. They eventually come across a sign pointing them to All Night Dining. Did I put the man in Dan Man or what? Which leads them to your stereotypical nerd living in his mother's basement, played by Bobcat Goldthwait. Who, by the way, is one of Raven's favorite actors. Oh yeah, right up there with Gilbert Gottfried. <sighs> and yes, you're seriously watching a troll watching television, surrounded by old stereo hardware. I honestly have no idea what the director was going for here. He captures the kids, but the Sandman saves them almost immediately, making this whole scene completely pointless. You are the weakest link. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> oh gosh, that's funny. That's really funny. Do you, do you write your own material? Do you? Because that is so fresh. You are the weakest link. Goodbye. You know, I've, I've never heard anyone make that joke before. Mm, you're the first. I've never heard anyone reference reference that outside the program before. Say man! I thought we'd never see you again! If I thought you mean hoped. Be a darling, would you? Oh, uh, just uh, back off! I, I know who you are, fairy girl. Just... What's wrong, Sandman? Sandman? <laughs> As in sprinkle, sprinkle, sleepy sleep? I do kids, all right? Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Hollywood career suicide button. I do kids, all right? So yeah, they rescue this wood fairy who was also captured by the troll, somehow. And she retrieves her magic wands, which she carries around in a gun belt. I don't know what's weirder. The idea to make this girl look like the Lara Croft fairy, or that apparently the Sandman is turned on by it. And for some reason, she joins the party instead of going on her fairy way. You don't have a clue where you are, do you? What is with all the questions? I haven't had sleep in two days. Do you mind? Are you purposely trying to undermine my authority? Listen, if we don't get these kids something to eat soon, they're going to waste away to nothing. So the sooner we get them home, the sooner they can get something to eat. And I think it's about time you're voted off. I don't think so. You are so in denial. Am not. <laughs> you so are. Am not. Yes, you are. Am not. Yes, you are. Am not. We briefly cut back to the stepmother, who in her attempts to lose the kids in the woods has gotten lost herself, and she comes across the troll from before. Oh, nice. Dinner and a movie. I like it. Yes, you are. Not. Yes, not. you are. Not. Yes, you what? Not. Yes, not. They've been arguing like this all f***ing day? Yes, you 
I guess they got their bickering skills from the three wise men. The Earth revolves the around, around the sun. The no, it's ah, the Earth around the, the sun. sun around the Earth. Anytime you feel like doing something important, movie, feel free to let us know. That does it. Bob, can you smell what the thin man's cooking? It doesn't say that. Well, I might. Come on, I'm just trying to spice it up a little bit. It's okay, Daddy. You're doing just fine. You know what's funny? Apparently we have Dad here to thank for all of these jokes and pop culture references being shoehorned into the movie. The kids tell him that he doesn't need to do that. And they keep coming anyway. Did I say funny? I meant excruciating! Sandman has to leave to do his Sandmanly duties, but he says he'll make it up to the kids by getting them a nice big breakfast in the morning. Eggs, toast, waffle, bacon, you name it. Wild boar, pumpernickel bread, black forest gato with fries. That's gonna be a little tougher to drive through. But the kids are still famished, so the wood fairy goes off to find some food for them now. I'll be back in a flash. No pun intended. None comprehended. The witch, meanwhile, is getting fed up with this movie meandering at the pace that it has been, so she summons a windstorm to help get the plot going. They survive the storm by doing absolutely nothing to protect themselves from it, and Hensel smells a strange scent in the air. Hey, Gretel. Do you smell that? Yes. The hell is this? Is the witch spying on them through a dirty crystal ball? Someone's belly button? Stretch Armstrong goop? A broken kaleidoscope? What?! Oh. We're just gonna ignore that incredibly confusing shot. Okay, thanks, movie. So, yeah, they come across the witch's candy house, and naturally don't question its existence whatsoever. They meet the witch, who is disguised as a harmless, nearsighted little old lady. Can you see us? I am a little short-sighted. But I can hear you, and more importantly, I can smell you. A boy. And a girl. <laughs> what are your names? Hi, I'm running, and this is my brother, away! Yeah, as if the giant candy house wasn't weird enough. This lady can smell that there is a boy and a girl eating it. None of this is raising a little red flag for these kids. They go into the witch's house to find some very subtle product placement. I can't explain why, but I suddenly have this craving for Butterfingers and Crunch Bars! <laughs> Special thanks to Nestle. Yeah, you think? Come, hurry, gorge yourselves, feast, pig out until you oink, eat, feed, devour. I love to hear little children eating. It makes me so... so <laughs> Is it getting hot in here? <laughs> Emmy, Oscar, Tony, and Grammy Award nominee, Lynn Redgrave, ladies and gentlemen. After the Sandman comes back and he and the Wood Fairy set off to find the kids, we jump back to the stepmother, who has pretty much taken over the troll's entire life. Um, how? Why? And she just instantly accepts the existence of television, and she knows how credit cards work. Submitted for your approval, a movie that makes no fucking sense! After the kids are done making pigs of themselves, the witch offers them one more little treat. Wait for thin mints. Thanks for reminding me of the worst scene from Monty Python's Meaning of Life. Finally, monsieur, a waffle thin mint. She has a couple of beds made up for them, and she wishes them good night. And dream of a grand slam breakfast. <sighs> Remember, we eat, then we bust a move, okay? Okay. 
The kids wake up prematurely and decide to make their break for it upon noticing that the house isn't what it's supposed to be. Then they get stopped by a raven who is voiced by Sinbad. Because if hiring a black actor for the voice of a black bird works for Dumbo and Fritz the Cat, why shouldn't it work here? A talking raven. Kid, you're in a magic forest. Talking ravens? We're a dime a dozen. I beg your pardon? But oh no, the witch catches them before they can escape. You're not gonna eat us. Oh yes, indeed I am. <laughs> Main course, Brat West. But first, we have to supersize you a little bit. <laughs> not as weak as I look, eh? Emerald, eat your heart out. Bam! Okay, shorty. Meanwhile, the Sandman is depressed for losing the kids, so he tries to put himself to sleep forever. We'll cut that out, you idiot. I found them. Half night. Nighty night. Will you wake up? Did you hear what I said? Is that you, Mommy? I said my prayers and I went party just like you told me. And now it's sleepy time. I never thought that this would be my reintroduction to Bobby Jenrick, but there you go. I guess learning how to humiliate and tease others is an important part of the educational process. Back at the witch's house, the witch has promoted Gretel from simply doing manual labor to cooking the meals used to fatten up Hansel. Feeding time! You know, movie, if you show us a full plate of food not being full anymore, we can kind of infer that the food was eaten. You don't need to relish this montage with a series of burps. And I thought that the witch was a master chef already. What does she need Gretel for? Since when did she know anything about cooking? Pretty impressive for someone who doesn't even eat consistently herself. And sure, Gretel may be forced into doing this, but can't she look the slightest bit mortified by what she's doing? She's aiding the witch in eating her brother! She should be disgusted by this, but she's just charging through like she's on Top Chef or something. And why is Hansel just eating everything he's given? It's not like he's starving anymore, and I'm pretty sure that the prospect of being eaten would make one lose their appetite. How about a glass of water? Hey Jumbo, the water, forget about it. Witches hate water. What? You're telling me you haven't seen The Wizard of Oz? And would you believe that this is actually a plot point? We jump back to the Sandman and the Fairy, who are still no closer to finding Hansel and Gretel. You know, they mentioned several times in this movie that millions of kids depend on the Sandman to have a good night's sleep, otherwise they just stay awake all night. That stands to reason that the Sandman would know where every child on Earth actually is, so he can visit them and do his thing, kind of like Santa Claus. How does this guy not have any idea of where these two kids are? They did sleep in this earlier scene, so wouldn't that suggest that the Sandman does know where they are? Anyway, they take a break for some pointless character development. Something about the fairy not being part of a fairy clan. I don't know, it's just filler. And she kisses him from out of nowhere. The girl touching me, yuck! <laughs> Back at the witch's house, Hansel has finally reached the witch's standards of fatness. Oh, time for the fava beans and a nice candy. She activates the oven. No. She doesn't start the oven. She doesn't light the oven. She doesn't turn the oven on. She activates it. <laughs> then she prepares to eat Hansel. Gretel, can't you see? In the mirror! She's a witch! You gotta do something! Oh, she's a witch? I thought she was just a helpless little old lady who wanted to eat us. But if you say that she's a witch, I guess maybe we ought to do something! Gretel gets the idea to smash a mirror, which results in nothing but the witch's true form being revealed. Okay. So she proceeds with her plan to go cancel, but Gretel isn't sure of the witch's cauldron being big enough for him to fit in. 
She demonstrates that it's perfectly fine when the Sandman and the fairies show up from out of nowhere to push her into the oven. Just what was Gretel going to do in the very likely events that these two didn't happen to show up? They try to release Hansel, but the witch somehow survives being cooked. Hansel remembers what the raven told him about witches and water, so the Sandman heroically kicks a bucket of water at her, then just zaps her with the fairies' magic wands. So that whole water thing was a plot point that ended up being completely pointless. How do you do that? Yeah, I guess pushing the witch into the oven only works if you do it with magic wands. Whatever. So the kids are safe. Hansel apparently got knocked up by the food at some point. Their father just happens to find them. The Sandman and the fairy can't be seen by adults. Then the kids have to say their goodbyes. In your dreams? I think I'll miss you least of all. Then they all lived happily ever after, and the kids in the real world can have a good night's sleep. Oh my god! Hella, <gasps> I just, um, excuse me. I just, oh, is it, okay. Let me just, oh, there it is. Just came back for this. Just somebody must have dropped it. Alright. Sorry. Yeah. Leap on it. And that goes for everyone else, too. Okay, then? So, after that raping of reality, the movie really comes to an end as we see the stepmother stumble across the witch's house. Talk about your fixer-upper. Well, you know what they say. Location, location, location. Because we really needed someone to carry on the witch's legacy, I guess. So that was Hansel and Gretel. It was awful! I honestly have no idea what the thought process was behind this movie. The scenes with the witch were enjoyable, but for the most part, the rest of the movie is padded to hell with complete garbage. It's rife with plots that go nowhere, pointless characters, confusing casting choices, terrible jokes, and it completely ruins the point of the original story. It's kind of hard to learn how to be wary of strangers when Hansel and Gretel had to rely on two strangers to save the day, and since they had to rely on two strangers to save the day, this movie completely loses its angle of child empowerment. Fairy tales exist to tell us that dragons can be beaten, but just make sure you have someone else beat the dragons for you. All in all, when you're making the Tim Burton version of Hansel and Gretel look less batch insane, you truly have entered the Twilight Zone.
because that, that's what she says on the show, right? Isn't it? You are the weakest link. Goodbye. And, and, and yet you've taken that and, and used it out of context to insult me in this everyday situation. God, what a clever, smart girl you must be to come up with, with a joke like that all by yourself. Mm. That's so fresh, too. Any, any titanic jokes you want to throw at me as long as we're hitting these phenomena at the height of their popularity? Because mm? I'm, I'm, I'm here. God, you're so funny. Subscribe.